Welcome to another episode of Healthy Way Podcast, where we discuss health issues ranging from physical, mental, emotional, as well as current facts. Today, we're going to be talking about critical and disability insurance and why you may need both. Please allow me to introduce you to Sean Plowden, who is a financial advisor with over 19 years of experience. So thank you, first of all, for joining. I appreciate you taking your time. I, I know you're a busy man. So again, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. For a lot of um, for our audience itself, Sean, um, we often hear about critical disability insurance, but not many people know the difference. And I don't even know if there's an age limit. Can you give us some feedback on what is the difference? And even then, is there an age limit to even get one of these insurance? Yeah. So with critical illness and disability insurance, they're sometimes lumped in the same conversation together, but they are two very different products. Okay. And I'll give you an uh, explanation. Disability insurance is based solely on your ability to work. If okay. you are unable to work because of illness or even an accident, and you have a disability insurance, it will okay. pay you a monthly benefit, which usually works out to 60 to 70, 60 to 70% of your working income. Okay. So it will pay you a monthly benefit for X amount of time, depending on the policy that you have. Okay. While critical illness is not dependent on your ability to, to work, uh, the insurance company will actually give you a list of what they consider critical illnesses. And most companies have 25 to 27 different illnesses. Okay. If you get one of those illnesses, it will pay out a one-time benefit. That benefit can range anywhere from one to two years of your annual salary. You can actually choose what that benefit is. Okay. So disability pays a monthly income, while critical illness is a one-time benefit that's being paid to you. Oh, I never actually, to be honest, that's really good because I don't, I don't believe I, I don't believe, I know for a fact I don't know this. <laughs> this is why I asked you. And I appreciate that because that's a great insight to those two insurance. And like, okay, so now we understand what the insurance are. But then a lot of people are like, okay, thank you for telling me, but they have, certain people have misconceptions on that, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of the misconceptions I've often heard is that um, you don't need them at all. Like, so you tell me what, you tell me the benefits of what, but why would I need one? Like, wouldn't I just have savings account or investment account for this kind of situation? So a lot of people think that they don't need this type of insurance. And, and what's the reason for that? The majority of the reason for that is they think it's never going to happen to them. I'm not okay. going to get cancer. I'm not going to have a stroke. So that's why they think it's not needed. But in actuality, one in three Canadians will get cancer. And I'm not saying that to scare you, I'm just stating the facts. Every four minutes in Canada, somebody is diagnosed with cancer. So even if you have um, some savings built up, um, do you have enough that could survive you for maybe a year of living expenses? Uh, what we've learned just from the current corona pandemic is many Canadians didn't even have one month of income uh, if they're not getting paid from their job. So sure. if you didn't have some kind of um, financial services to help you while you are sick, it will be a very challenging time for you. And I respect that because I think you're right. Like it's, it's even then when you mentioned the whole thing about COVID-19, COVID um, the fact that a lot of people, once they lost their job, they, they were all, people live paycheck to paycheck. So like, right. if, you, if you're injured, if you're already living paycheck to paycheck, how are you, like, why wouldn't you think you need it to a certain extent? And which makes, and I appreciate that feedback. And to add on to that is a lot of people that have jobs, they use, they have group insurance, right? So I know that in this current situation, a lot of people lost their jobs, right? And yep. I, I think a lot of them, like maybe at one point, one of the myths would be like, okay, well, I have group insurance. Do I really need it? Like, why would I need extra one? Why would I need to pay for extra insurance if I already have insurance, technically? So group insurance is a great way to be protected. And anybody okay. that has a company that does offer group insurance, I advise you to get it. However, it's very important that you read that policy and you have a clear understanding because most group insurance policies have a cap that usually make it inadequate for most Canadians to, to maintain their financial needs. And I'll give you an example uh, okay. of a, another clause within those group plans is their definition of occupation. So even if your doctor says, okay, you have a disability and you are unable to work, your job can actually force you to come into work under what they call modified duties. Okay. So maybe they give you a lighter workload, maybe they modify your hours in some way, 
But for some people, they really need that time to stay home and take care and help themselves get better versus worrying about their job. So group policies are good, but it's very important that you look into your group policy, see exactly what it does and does not cover. And if there's something it does not cover, you should put something in place to make sure you have that coverage. You know what? I think I never really thought of it that way. Like now I'm sitting there listening to you talk, right? And I didn't even know there was a cat. So I gotta look at my group insurance. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> but then and um, yeah, like I have you, I guess on the side note, have you had people that come up to you and you've told them that they're the cap and they're surprised? Many times. Okay. Um, so what I'll, what I'll actually do, if it's a client, I'll say, you know what, get a copy of your group plan next time we meet and let's go through it together. Okay. And it's usually a few pages, but I know where to go to highlight the key points. And once I show them some of the group plan, they're like, oh, I didn't know that. That's usually the, that's usually the first statements I hear is, I did not know that because you know you start a new job and they say oh we have benefits signed there and you sign up you really don't take the time to understand exactly what's covered from what's not covered because you're worried about making sure you keep your job or you can do your job itself exactly exactly <laughs> and I don't want to make it sound like I'm speaking badly of, of private group insurance because okay. those are really good plans but you do have to understand what it covers and what it does not cover so basically, and don't just automatically assume that you're covered. Like, do you do your due diligence, reach out to somebody to review those um, that contract, not contract per se, but that benefits to, to understand the full aspects of it. And then I guess with that being said, there's there's times that um, I, I'm sorry, let me step back. There's times that a lot of people are looking at like, okay, well, if I want a critical or disability insurance, I already am sick. Like, um, this pre, they're pre medical um, this sorry, pre this, you know what I'm going with. I think I'm saying pre existing conditions. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you for helping me with that part. <laughs> but it's more like a lot of them. You hear them like, well, they're not going to give me. I'm not going to get approved because I'm already sick. Like, so are, is that is that true? I guess I'm asking. You. Like, I guess yeah. Like, what is your opinion in respect to that? So there is some truth to that myth. Okay. If you have a pre-existing medical condition, that will be a factor when applying for critical illness or disability insurance. Okay. However, that does not mean you cannot be approved. Many different insurance companies have different guidelines on what they would consider approved versus not approved. And some companies even have what's called a non-medical plan, which makes it fairly easy to get approved for. Okay. So if you have an advisor, I recommend you reach out to your advisor and ask about your specific medical condition. If you don't have an advisor, give my office a call. We will gladly give you a consultation at no charge and help you understand what options you have. I appreciate that. And I think it's true. Like you need to someone to, in that, if you're in that situation, you do need to speak to somebody. Like don't make assumptions. There's not, there's no part, there's nothing wrong asking. Cause That's right. yeah, really, I think, I know I asked you a lot of myths and misconceptions, and I think the reason why I'm asking is that I've also had those myths as well, and I've also heard, heard that from other people. And with so many of them out there, how does one differentiate from being factual or, yeah, being factual from being a myth? That's, I guess, that's really what I'm asking you. Yes. So the best way to differentiate between facts and myth is to do a bit of research. Okay. Now, I know many Canadians may not know where to do their research. They may not know what to type into their Google, Google search engine. So for that reason, you should definitely reach out to a financial professional. Um, at Cloud Wealth Management, we actually provide a 30-minute education session to anybody, whether they're a client or not. And that will give you 30 minutes to have a phone conversation with us, ask all the questions you want, no matter how silly you think those questions are, and let us help you understand. Um, so if you visit our website, cloudwm.ca, there is an education tab. If you click on that tab, you can schedule a 30 minute consultation and it's completely complimentary and uh, ask as many questions as you like during that consultation. So while well, you kind of skipped ahead of the time of where I was going to ask how they can reach out to you, but you know, I, you all got that information, how you can reach out to you. And I think a lot of people, um, if they're going to reach out to you, and um, why should they reach out to you? What sets you apart from other um, financial advisors out there or wealth management companies? And so just to touch on my last comment, what really sets me apart is education. Uh, I'm not the type of advisor that says you should get this signed here. 
Um, I will help you understand what options are available. I want you to know, I want you to be able to have enough information so that you can make an informed decision based on what's best for you and what's best for your family. So education is such a big part of my financial planning process. Okay. Um, in addition to that, I'm a broker which means I don't work for an insurance company. I don't work for a bank. I work for you. I work okay. for my clients. So we have a conversation. We determine what you need from financial services. And then my job is to go to the different insurance and investment companies throughout Canada and help get you the best rates and get you the best products. And then I just on touch on to top on that is like a lot of people, you know, critical, dis critical and disability, disability is related to your health, right? And I think a lot of and people have to realize, like, and physical health and financial health is, is kind of, you work in tandem because if you're sick, it's going to affect your pocket, right? So you have to make sure you work in tandem in respect to that. So, like, to add on top of that, a lot of people maybe we reach out to you to understand why do we talk to you? What happens if, like, okay, well, maybe I can't afford this, like, you know, how do like do you help them budget and do you offer stuff like that, or do they, or even then if you if they don't reach out to you, what advice can you, what kind of suggestions can you help the audience on how to budget if this is something you're interested in in the future? So if somebody had reached out to me, um, one of the first things we do is a bit of a financial planning process. Okay. Well, we talk about what are your financial goals, what is it that you would like to achieve over the next three to five years. And then we talk about what could potentially come up within that time to stop you from reaching your goals. Okay. That's when we start talking about critical illness and disability. And we would have a conversation to determine if you should have any, because not everybody needs it, but we'll okay. determine if you should have any, what type you should have. And a financial plan will also help us look at your budget to determine what you can afford to spend on these types of services. So in a nutshell, having a financial plan will really help you understand what what type of insurance products you should have and what type of a budget you should set aside for those insurance products. And I respect that and that's fair because you can't really like you can't budget for something unless you understand what your need is and how you that's right. what yeah and I think a lot of people like if the audience are listening like you know this it is your health and if and you, nobody's gonna be like someday down the line we may get sick you know we may get injured and what are you doing to ensure that your health doesn't affect and um, like, what are you doing to protect yourself? You know, that's what I'm really saying. Um, so I guess for the audience and the, for the audience stuff, I want to say thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate the My feedback. Pleasure. It was a, it was a sincere pleasure. And yeah, thank you again. If I can add one last thing. Sure. Please. Um, for many people, when they're applying for these types of insurances, they like to say, do I really need this? Do I want to spend this money on this? Um, but I'll tell you this, when people are filing a claim because they've gotten sick or they've had an accident, they always say, why didn't I buy more? Really? So really, yeah, people think about it. Let's say, for example, knock on wood, somebody gets diagnosed with cancer and they're going to be off work for an extended amount of time. The more money they can have to help them with that time off, the better. So people would always want more. And if I can give you a quick example, a good friend of mine, her mother was recently diagnosed with cancer. Okay. She didn't have any disability or critical illness insurance. One of their biggest expenses wasn't even a medical expense. It was, she had treatment four times a week. It was $30 a day for parking. So that was $120 a week just in parking at the, at the cancer care facility. So sometimes there are these other expenses that you did not expect, you did not plan for that come up. And $120 a week is quite a bit. And okay. in that same case, my friend had to take a lot of time off of work. At first, their company was very accommodating and it was paid, but it got to a point where it was unpaid. So she was losing a lot of money to take her mom to get cancer treatment. But she had no choice, she had to do it. I get it. And you're right. Like... We all live the life, we're all worried about, you know, what we eat, what we're doing, but we never know what's going to happen. And if you're living a healthy life, just also, you know, protect yourself. Like, you know, you're right. Like people have insurance for some insurance is there for you. It's something if you need it, you need it. But before you know you need it, reach out to someone and just look at the options, the benefits. So again, That's thank it. you. I and I appreciate that feedback. And it was a sincere, sincere, sorry, it was a sincere, pre oh Lord, I can't speak English. It was a sincere pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you having people. 
Thank you for joining us today on our weekly episode of Health Your Way podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share with others, and please feel free to comment below and ask any questions on topics we discuss as well as future topics you'd like to hear about. Have a happy and healthy week and be sure to tune in next week for the next episode on our Health Your Way podcast.